massing was having unacceptably and significantly, to use the officer's words, adverse impact on the amenities of the properties immediately adjacent to the site, uh, both in Benzie Close, Woodpecker Close and Headington Road, and the surrounding area by reason of overlooking the loss of privacy and visually overbearing impact, which is therefore contrary to um, the Council's UDP policies HS4 and HS7. Okay, so I've got a second then. Okay, so, okay, so all those in favour of that refusal and the reason behind it, please show. Four, and all those against. Okay, okay, that is lost. If I, do I have to move someone else to move it? Don't forget there was a couple of extra conditions put in at the beginning, so someone can move the approval and the extra conditions associated. <laughs> Councillor Abbey and seconded by Councillor Kelly, table the second there. Okay, all those in favour of approval, please show. Four, and okay, and all those against. Okay, okay. Um, for those people who are here for that, the um, Recommendation has been approved, is approval, with a couple of extra conditions which you heard at the beginning. And thank you for your attendance uh, and uh, good order, and uh, wish you safety and okay.
The new dwelling will sit some half a metre forward of the rear elevation of seven constantly close and two metres forward of the front elevation of that property. An assessment of the BRI, the BRE guidelines for natural light to this property demonstrates that it will not be adversely impacted on as a result of this dwelling being erected, with both windows to the rear and front elevation of number seven not being really subject to any shaded. The double windows to the rear of the proposed new dwelling will be sited 23 metres from the rear elevation of 5 Long Avenue and also 11 metres of the shared new boundary between these two properties. These are in excess of the expected interface distances that the council would expect to see achieved when considering applications for new dwellings. In conclusion, the revised application would not have any adverse impact on the amenities of neighbouring properties or the character of the street scheme. Street scene. The scale and layout <coughs> and design of the proposed new dwelling is considered to be acceptable for the site and will not have an adverse impact on the character of the area. Private amenity space is provided to both the new dwelling and was aimed for the host property. The site is considered to be in a sustainable location with access to public transport and local amenities and is, and is considered to comply with policy HS4 criteria for new housing development and the principles of the National Government Policy Framework recommended for approval as no additional protection in this application. Okay, there is no petition. Uh, is there a ward council present who would like to speak? No. Uh, okay, uh, it's open to the committee then. I think, again, the site is a very beneficial state, but as far as I can see, I couldn't see anything wrong with that development as now proposed. Any other, no other comments? We just make, uh, just for transparency, one of the reasons why this has come to committee is because the agent is an elected member. So, um, in the spirit of things, if you have a move and second that. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Move, move approval and second it. Okay. We have a, a recommend, uh, recommendation of approval. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favour, please show. Uh, anybody against? Any abstentions? Okay, that's been approved unanimously. Okay, thank you. It is considered that the proposed development is an appropriate scale for its location 
and will support an established business. The proposals are considered to be acceptable and are recommended for approval. Again, there's no additional connection to this application. Thank you. Thank you. No petition for um, uh, against, or is there a board councillor wishing to speak? No? Okay, so we open it up to committee. David? Yeah, no, thanks, Chair. Um, there's no doubt about it that this is in the green belt, of course, and I have in normal terms a predisposition against building in the green belt, but that is not predetermination against building in the green belt. This, there's no doubt about it, will enhance the existing facilities, it will increase the viability of it, and it has no impact whatsoever on the surrounding area or on the green belt itself. So, on this occasion, I am quite happy to support the proposal, Chair. So any, any members wish to speak, be there for or against the new approvals? Okay, we have a mover. Sorry, it's been moved by Ron and seconded then by Dave yeah, Nelson. That's fine. Okay. okay, all members in favour of that, please show. Anybody against? Any abstentions? Okay, uh, for those here for item 4, that has been approved. Subject to all the conditions in the report, thank you. Now on item Okay, again, uh, this one was subject to. Sorry. Again, this was subject to a site visit, so we have the presentation from the officers. Thank you to you, Chair. Um, as you say, this application was subject to a member's site visit on Tuesday. Planning permission is sought for the demolition of the existing nursing home and the redevelopment of the site for an apartment block housing 12 two bed apartments. The existing building is an attractive building that is some 12 metres in height at its highest point and has been used as a 21 bed nursing home. There is a car park located at the front of the site which is accessed by Hospital Road. Private residential properties are located adjacent to the site. The building presently on site will be demolished, whilst it is undoubtedly an attractive building, especially when viewed from the Hospital Road frontage. It is not a listed building, nor is it located within the conservation area, and it does not have any significant or particular architectural or historic note that would require its retention. The new build proposed would take the form of an eight-shaped development built across three floors, with the second floor contained within the roof space. The ridge height of the proposed building is some nine metres, which would result in a building that is around three metres lower than that presently on site. The front of the proposed apartment block will be located further back from the inside edge of Spittle Road than the present building by some 2.3 metres. A large projection at the rear of the existing building will also be removed, resulting in the new building being further away from the rear boundary than at present. Although those elements of the building above single storey will move closer to the rear boundary than the building presently on site, the overall height of the building proposed is significantly lower than the present building with a lower ridge height of some three metres. The rear elevation of the new apartment block will be located between 14 and 11 metres from the rear boundary of the site and almost 25 metres from the rear elevation of the nearest property on Elton Drive at the rear of the site. The building will also be sited 3 metres off the shared boundaries with 6 and 10 Little Road at their closest points. These will be blank gables and the kitchen windows set in on the side elevations will be 6 metres away from the boundaries. There is an increased separation distance between number six little drive and the new building to that which exists on site at present, and habitable room windows to, to properties either side of the proposed development will not be adversely affected. The large tree at the front of the site will be retained, whilst one tree on the boundary of one of the ten little road will be taken down due to its poor health. Twelve parking spaces will be provided at the front of the site. This complies with supplementary plan document 4, which requires one space per apartment to be provided as a maximum. The site is within walking distance of local amenities and shops, is located close to the streets, <coughs> and also small railway station. Therefore, the site is considered to be a sustainable location for new development. 
Secure cycle storage is also provided at the rear of the site, together with an enclosed area for wind storage. Due to the number of apartments proposed, there is a requirement for affordable housing at a rate of 20%. This will be provided by way of commuted sum and will be secured by Section 26 legal agreement. In conclusion, the development proposed is considered to be an acceptable reuse of the site and will result in a good quality development that will sit well within the street scene. The proposed will not adversely impact on the amenities of neighbouring properties or the character of the wider area and is considered to comply with policy HS4, the supplementary point document 2 on flat conversions and self-contained apartments, and the principles of the National Planning Policy Framework. It's recommended for approval, subject to the section 106 legal agreement, and there is no petition in connection with this application. Okay, there isn't a petition uh, on this one, but I do think we have a Lord Councillor uh, available to speak. Unlimited time, I believe. Um, so uh, just give your name and um, carry on. Thank you, Chair. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Local residents and councillors both have concerns about this proposed development for a number of reasons. Firstly, there is no foot access to this property, including lack of formal crossing from the entrance to the ultimate side of the road. Despite the contents of the report, the volume of traffic is actually uh, uh, significant, especially in peak times. Indeed, cars back up to the motorway in one direction and past the train station in the opposite direction, nearly a mile each way. This would make entrance and exit from this property very difficult at this time for motorists and pedestrians. Uh, the current use of the property was as a nursing home, which obviously only ever had a few staff and a handful of visitors rather than 12 dwellings with potentially uh, what, at least one car per property. Even with the applicant providing a, a footway in the front of the property, the neighbouring properties do not have a footway and would not be obligated to provide one. Secondly, residents and local councillors have concerns about the parking availability. Although 12 spaces have been allocated for 12 two-bedroom properties, which does comply with the plan, the mention of tra sustainable transport available in the area has recently been limited as the bus services running in this region include a number of A1 buses which have not been permanently replaced. Also, the train station is already a prime commuter station, and as such, people drive from all over the area to this location and park in neighbouring side roads. Due to issues with the size of the available car park at the current station, uh, car parking is, is already a problem in the area meaning that this development will have limited parking for additional cars per property and also their visitors, especially during uh, work periods. Residents already complain regularly about the lack of parking outside their properties due to the issues with the train station, and adding an additional 12 dwellings would only exacerbate these issues. Uh, this, this suggests that there is an adequate parking and off-street parking garages as stated in HS4. Uh, thirdly, residents to the rear of the proposed developments, especially in, Eaton Drive, in Elton Drive, sorry, have concerns with the loss of privacy as the designs in the rear includes a large number of windows. With, although the property is increasing in height, it is increasing to three storeys, so there will be people living at a higher um, elevation than in the current design of the building, going from three storeys to from the current two. This will mean that people will be overlooking the rear properties. Residents are also concerned about the location of the bins, which is, which is also listed as a concern in um, proposed recommendations to add, add extra uh, requirements to the proposal. Uh, indeed, a lot of the bins will be near to one of the residents' rear patio, so the bins for 12 uh, properties may get quite small during some periods. So, uh, and they're also concerned about how those bins will be moved to the front of the property and the noise that will be created during those periods. And finally, it would be a shame, as, as was highlighted in the preamble, uh, that it is a nice building, and although it isn't listed and it, it's not an architectural note, it is a nice building that's in keeping with the properties to either side, and we have already lost a number of buildings in that area over recent, over years. 
to large uh, housing developments, and there's only a handful on that side of Spitfield Road, all, uh, a few of which have been redeveloped whilst keeping their current uh, external uh, design. Uh, so the change in the design to a three-storey property and losing that building will be out of character with the name of the properties. And for these reasons, I ask the Lord Committee to refuse the application. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Adam. Uh, any response to the board members' issues? Okay. Um, we've opened up to committee. We've got George and Ian first. Okay. Well, from the Steelings, fellow Steelers, on this one. When we went to visit this on the other day, <coughs> on Tuesday, um, quite a few of the things that the Lord Captain Adam just recently said are either uh, inf what's the word? Well, not factual, because of the simple fact that the, the, when we were at the site, we were told that the height of the building would be dropped by something like, I forget the size of the but it was a, a good reduction down to where the height would be. Um, and, and then when you get to the back, and we went down the back to see the, the, uh, <coughs> the lady in, um, what's that that look? Yeah. Well, uh, and um, you can see the, the concern that she had at the stand where she's come across it and moved back towards her house. Um, but nevertheless, the, the questions that were asked and the points that have been raised, in particular, Matthew just made the point about the moral sex appeal because of the percent, um, which realistically can be used anyway, you can't be realistically. You can be saying one way to fall back which goes across the fronts or whatever. Um, so those things realistically is down to uh, people to discuss when you go down on the Just to clarify that point, that, that's not right. The section 106 is specifically a requirement for the provision of affordable housing. How does that for For affordable housing only, guys. Thanks, yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks to you. Um, you have a show more Just a couple of points if I can, if you can ask maybe through Matthew, you can just clarify a couple of things, uh, a couple of things for me. Um, we've had a couple of applications. This is another one tonight where it says the development uh, permitted, uh, one of the conditions that was recommended in condition one, uh, shall be begun before the uh, three years, basically. I understood there was a planning act that's reduced that to two years. Is that come to force yet? Or no, but that is proposed at the moment, isn't it? Going to task with yeah. Okay, right. Just so we're just to understand what, what the way things are moving. Um, in terms of development itself, are there any planning conditions, in your opinion, Matthew, through your chair, that we could impose in regards to the location of the bin store at the back of the property? That was the one point that was raised on the site visit that we had some validity by the residents, notwithstanding what the Lord Council said as well. Thank you, to you, Chair. As you know, and, and, and as members who sat on the committee for some time will have heard me say before, um, conditions have to meet what we call the six tests of a condition. And, and included in those are whether they're necessary, whether they're enforceable, um, that they're applicable to the development. Um, and there are, there are three others, I can't recall a lot of them in my head, but I know them. Uh, but the, <laughs> uh, the, uh, the bin stores uh, at the back are actually enclosed, so um, we, we don't consider that, um, that, that a condition to require them to be elsewhere on the site is necessary. Uh, Don? Yeah, just, just to answer, George mentioned that just a client question, because it, it does say here that the, uh, the, the creation of a two metre footway to the front of the, of the, of the, of the site would be controlled through conditions. And that's a condition of climbing, isn't it? Am I right? As part of the development. So, yeah, through you, that's a condition, but it, it's <laughs> not part of the section 106 agreement. No, but it's a condition of the yes, development. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, a precondition of development. You have to comply with that, the development will not be allowed. Yes. That, that's what that's Thank you, Chair. Uh, just to, to clear up on that footway, that would only be in front of that one particular property, um, and there is no footway from the shops down to the station. 
But the thing I wanted to ask was, we, we heard on the virtual court application there were certain um, conditions imposed regarding WO lines. Is that something we can do here? Um, following the assessment of the application, we, we do not consider that uh, weight restrictions are necessary for this funds.
adjacent to 27 Wood, Wood End Road and New Ferry to incorporate as part of the garden area to this property. The proposals also allow for the erection of a boundary fence. A small part of the site is located within the primarily industrial area, whilst the remaining part is situated within the primarily residential area. That part of the site in the industrial allocation means that the development proposed is in part contrary to the development plan and is the referral to committee. The site is currently unused and derelict and is used for fly tipping. There is no prospect of this small area being brought forward for industrial use and the proposals would allow for this area <coughs> to be properly maintained and tidied up, which will undoubtedly have a positive impact on the appearance and character of the street scene. Given the small scale nature of the development proposed and that the area will be used as a residential and private garden space, it is considered that the proposal is acceptable and is recommended for approval. There is no petition in association with this application. Okay, there is no um, petition. Is there a ward councillor wishing to speak? Are there any? Okay, no. I'll open it to the members. Second approval, That's approved and seconded. Approval. All those in favour of approval, please show. That is unanimous. Uh, anyone here for white and black? That's been approved. Uh, number 10, this is the plan adjacent to Pine Tree Gold. You have been on site as it is, what's it all? Let the officer talk first. Okay, this application was the subject of a member site, it was on Tuesday. Planning Commission is sought the erection of a bungalow on land adjacent to Pine Tree Court in Wallasey. The proposals would result in the demolition of a small block of three garages currently located at the rear of the site. The area is predominantly residential in character. The site is located adjacent to a complex of flats that appear as two storey dwellings. Immediately north and northwest of the site are bungalows located off Holly Lane, and to the north and northeast is St. Henry's Medical Centre. The site sits considerably lower than developments that neighbour it. The new bungalow will be located at the rear of the site, approximately two metres off the boundary wall, uh, off the boundary which is defined by a large wall behind which is located the car park for the medical centre. The east side elevation of the new bungalow is located less than one metre from the cable elevation of 15 and 16 Pine Tree Court, which sits considerably higher than the application site. The front elevation of the proposed bungalow would sit approximately halfway down this, this cable elevation, and in front of the dwelling would be located front gardens that are identified on the submitted plan as the immediate space for the property. There is a small area of amenity space to the rear of the site that is two metres deep and located between the high boundary wall and the rear elevation of the new dwelling. The new dwelling would be one bedroom and would also house a kitchen, dining room, lounge and bathroom. All windows to these rooms are located to the front and rear of the proposed dwelling with the exception of the bathroom window located on the northwest face of the side elevation. The proposed would be considerably smaller in scale than surrounding properties. Neighbouring properties would not be adversely impacted upon in terms of potential for overlooking or loss of light, as the new dwelling is single storey and sits considerably lower than its neighbours. All separation distances expected from a new residential development are achieved. Parking is provided at the front of the property, accessed directly from the Pine Tree Court. Permitted development rights would be removed to ensure that no future additions could be made to the property without first being properly considered by the planning authority. In summary, the proposed development is relatively small scale and would not impact neg negatively on the character of the area or on the amenities of neighbouring properties. The proposals are considered to be in keeping with policy HS4 and the principles of the National Planning Policy Framework and are recommended for approval. There's no petition. Okay, uh, there is no petition. Is there a ward councillor? Back to the vessels. Yes, Councillor Murray. <coughs> Just announce your name for the take the webcast and then. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Leslie Murray from Obviously Ward Vessels. Can I give apologies to my board colleague, Councillor Paul Hayes, who actually took 
took this item out of delegation. He can't be here tonight um, because of a, um, another engagement. Um, and he was hoping to bring along a number of um, the older people who live in the area, but they too have declined. Um, they, they too, Paul hasn't obviously declined to come, but the yeah, older people uh, are just going to come out in the evening. So um, I'm here just to put forward a number of the points really that are already detailed within the report. Um, and again, thank you uh, to those members of the um, committee who took the time to actually go out and visit the area um, in the Brown Country Court. Um, as you will see, the reasons that the um, residents have given are varied, and uh, clearly I understand that some of those reasons uh, don't actually fit within reasons to refuse for planning legislation. But if I could just um, reiterate those and say I won't keep you too long. Residents in the area, as you know, it's um, a small cul-de-sac for residents who are 50 years and over. Many of them there, I'm sure they would mind me telling you, are well over 70 and they enjoy a really quiet, peaceful lifestyle there. <coughs> they also contend that um, this development, um, as you know, it's uh, three garages, as I mentioned, some hard space land. Um, if it was to be um, turned into a site where a bungalow was erected, uh, they believe it would affect the parking conditions in and around, not only just Pine Court, but Wallasey Village itself. The residents are also concerned about the loss of light and the privacy that any building on that particular site would actually inflict upon them. And they do contend, and they contend to this day, that it's out of keeping with um, the amenities that they have there in the local area. And there was actually some concern, and I know within the report um, that has been amended, and that was the access that um, would be impeded if um, residents, excuse me, in Korea all day, it was all um, <coughs> if, um, if this Clearly, residents were concerned about the impact it would have um, on impeding their access um, over the steps and the ramp which leads up to the medical centre and also onto Broadway. But uh, I do see that that's actually been amended. So, as I say, for, for the reasons that the residents have laid out within um, the, the report, I would ask perhaps that you give consideration that, in fact, it would be over development of that site and it would affect the, um, the peace and quiet that those local residents have come to enjoy in the area. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Leslie. Um, we've got open to members, so I've got David who's indicated and Ian. Okay. <laughs> Another very interesting site visit. I would like the officers, if they will, to just put up the location plan. I think the first impression we got was that this was like somebody building a house in the entrance to the Mersey Tunnel or in the entrance to a <coughs> some sort of, I don't know, some sort of hole in the ground. It didn't, it looked totally inappropriate and enclosed on three sides. I can't honestly imagine anybody wanting to live with the only aspect being able to look forward down a drive towards a, a um, car parking space. So I, I thought I couldn't believe it when I saw it. It, it seemed to be the lack of, if you just look at the plan there now, the lack of amenity around the three sides of the property, uh, mitigated to some extent by the fact you can now look forward down a, little, a, lot of, a narrow path <coughs> down the road. I think the site visit was absolutely essential in demonstrating how inappropriate this development was as a solution to providing accommodation in that area. So obviously I'm happy to let other people speak, Steve, but I've got a reason for refusal which I'd like to have the opportunity to present after any basis. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, so I guess it was useful. I think um, I was quite surprised when this application first came in when I first heard there was a planning application to build on a, a site of the garage in Pine Tree Court. I thought we were talking of the area nearer to the junction of this development. Um, I never for one minute thought we were looking at developing these three garages. Um, just a more technical point, Chair, for clarity, on the road and the report itself and on the map refers to Folly Lane being north of this site. 
Um, it's not fully laid. Those, those properties are listed as being properties in Broadway, not fully laid, just so we're clear in terms of the rest of the report. Uh, but also this particular <coughs> application will see the loss of three garages, which results in three cars having to park within the small car park within the development. And I, like my colleagues and like my ward colleagues, I do think this is overdeveloped on this particular site. Um, if it had been suitable for development, the original pine tree course would have included a development on this site as well. I think this is nothing more than infill, and it's an opportunity to, to apply for planning permission, but I don't think, in terms of anybody who lives in this property, to be surrounded on two sides by high walls, as they are, and on the right-hand side, a uh, high wall leads to a garden. I don't think that's particularly um, uh, really in keeping, if I'm honest. And we also have the issue that was raised on the site visit chair of what well, we can see on that illustration on the wall behind us and where the steps are, there is also a ramp for people in wheelchairs to access those properties. That the red boundary line clearly shows that if the person who occupies this bungalow decides to park across those steps for the access to the, uh, to the ramp, people can't get in or out of the bungalow, uh, the uh, flats next to it. So I would, I would seek some assurance that if that is a condition that was referred to, if it's going to be met, uh, but I'll also be happy to hear some of my colleagues' reasons for refusal. I do think this is only development on a small site. Any other want to speak in favour? <laughs> or make any other contributions? Okay, um, I, again, I was on a site visit. It, I think the phrase that came into my head was shoehorned, yeah. uh, shoehorned into a, a, a little corner. However, Someone could quite adequately live there for the rest of their days there in, 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 and, and enjoy it. So it's uh, very much open to the members. If you haven't got a reason for a refusal, we'll see how that goes and then we'll be probably move to approve it. Thank you. Thank you. Right, my read for refusal. If the proposed development constitutes an overdevelopment of the site that would result in a cramped appearance which would fail to be of a high standard of design and or layout. In particular, the close proximity of the rear elevation to the rear boundary wall and the eastern side elevation located less than one metre from the gable end of 15 and 16 Pine Tree Court would result in an unsatisfactory quality of residential accommodation for future occupiers. The proposal also fails to provide any satisfactory private amenity space of sufficient size and quality commensurate to the size and layout of the dwelling itself proposed. The development is therefore clearly, in my view, and I might clearly in fact comment, is therefore contrary to policy HS4 criteria for new housing development, together with the principles of the national planning policy framework. I so move the future chair. That got a second there? It's been seconded by you. Okay, all those in favour of refusal, please show. Yeah, unanimous, are you unanimous? Yeah. yeah. Unanimous. Unanimous, please. Okay, unanimous uh, recommendation of refusal. So, anyone who was here for that application, okay. that application has been refused by the committee. Yeah. Uh, okay. <coughs> Okay, uh, like the members, uh, these are normal reports in as much as we've had them. Yeah. Item 11. Item 11. Item 11.